Gary, thanks for talking to us. Really good to speak to you. Um, already day two of our trip to Ireland. Firstly, how are you finding it so far? Yeah, it's been good. The players have worked really hard, you know, during the course of pre-season up to this point. And it's always nice to, to get away. We've got one or two new players within the group. You get to, to know them better, relationships are built and stuff like that. We travelled over on the Sunday. You know, our first training session was this morning and uh, we got the game tomorrow evening. But uh, yeah, they've, uh, they've had a, a, a good go and settled in well here at the hotel. Yeah, how, how has it been? Obviously, we spend a lot of time with each other at the training ground, but that extra time travelling in the hotel in the evenings as well, how has that all been? And obviously, there's sponsors here as well. So how has it been spending time with not just all the players, all the staff, but all the, the sponsors and you know everyone who's travelled over with us? I think it's been good. It's been different. Um, and you touched on it. Uh, the sponsors being here with us as well. So that's different. You know, they get to know us. You know, the players get to know them as well. And, you know, we're, we're eating together and stuff like that. So they've seen how we prepare for training and, you know, lunch and dinner and stuff like that. So it's been good. And, you know, the owners are all here together as well, the sponsors, the players, the staff. So there's a real good togetherness here. So uh, it can only bode, bode well for us. During your coaching career, have you done many pre-season trips and tours and things like that? Yeah, I've, I've had uh, a few trips abroad, uh, especially on the coaching managerial side. They're different, they're nice, it's a good uh, release, if you like, to get away from the training ground for X amount of days, change the scenery and stuff like that, different facilities and what have you. And then, you know, the game time as well is important for the players. So, uh, all in all, they're, they're very good. And obviously here in Ireland, obviously, I imagine very close to your heart, given your international career with Ireland, 21 caps, I think it is. So, uh, does it bring back memories as soon as you step back into this country? Yes, it's uh, when, it, when I was playing, which is a long time ago, um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to play with some, you know, outstanding players and uh, I was lucky to achieve that and do that, you know, and to play at that level against the players that I played against was, uh, you know, a fantastic experience for me. Um, and once my playing career was finished, I didn't, you know, visit uh, the country for quite some time. And I came over with my daughter uh, a year or so ago uh, for a visit, which was great. And then uh, it brings back a lot of memories. And then again, when we've touched down here yesterday, you know, again, it brings back memories. So uh, real good times, pleasant memories. And uh, yeah, uh, we've got a few de uh, days here now, uh, which I'm going to enjoy. What are your standout memories from your international career with Republic of Ireland? Well, I've touched on it that I played with some outstanding players, uh, played against some outstanding players also. Um, and I was never renowned as a goal scorer, um, but I, I chipped in with um, two or three goals uh, in, in the games that I had against good opposition. So, uh, yeah, some real highs, but uh, I, I had a, a major low at the same time at, uh, during my international career. That major low you touched upon, um, read that you came so close to reaching the 1990 World, World Cup, Cup squad. Was that really a difficult moment for you in your international career? Yeah, it was because I think every player wants to play at the highest level uh, and the highest level is you know, being involved in a World Cup. And with my career, I had to retire at an early age um, in England and then I had to go abroad, rebuild my career because of a knee injury that I had. Um, and I was fortunate enough to come back with uh, Millwall. Tony Cascarino played a big, important part in that. Uh, and then I was recalled to, you know, the international scene. So, uh, yeah, I got close, but not close enough. I was I left out of the squad at the last moments, which was disappointing for me on a personal front. But uh, I was delighted how, you know, the players and the squad went about uh, the World Cup campaign. Obviously, you managed to bounce back from that as well, didn't you? So uh, did you take a lot of lessons from that as well? Yeah, you learn, um, you know, during, during your playing career, you know, uh, um, how different managers, you know, do things and what have you. And when I went into the manage managerial side or the coaching side, you know, how to, you know, represent yourself, how to deliver things and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot from that spell that I had because it was difficult for me. Um, 
but you have to remain, you know, strong. There's a lots of highs, lots of lows in, you know, your playing career, and uh, I learnt from both. I guess that's the same with coming back from the injury as well. You know, you see the cross football so many players getting really difficult injuries, but managing to come back. So, you know, when some of our lads have had some difficult injuries, have you been able to sort of put an arm around their shoulder and say, listen, you can bounce back, you can really re-energise your career again after coming back from an injury? I, I think you have to, you know, as an individual yourself, you have to be strong. Look, it's all part and parcel uh, of the professional game. You're going to get injured uh, during the course of your career, but it's how you respond to it. You know, the staff here uh, are very good. The players here are very good. You know, they're together. And if anyone, you know, is out for a period of time, everybody sticks together, encourages them, motivates them uh, to return. But as I say, during the course of your career, you're going to get an injury. So uh, you have to be able to deal with that. Talk about that togetherness. It's been evident from the minute they met up at the airport, I think, the lads, and then at the training session earlier today. Looks like everyone's really excited for the game tomorrow. Are you looking forward to it as well? It should be a great occasion against Drada. No, it will be. Uh, obviously, with the link and the connection between the two sides, uh, it will be good. Um, but again, it's a pre-season friendly. Um, they're in their season, so their fitness levels will be high. Ours, we're building. Um, but we just need to maintain what we're doing. Uh, it's, it's a fitness exercise at the end of the day. Uh, three points are not at stake. You know, we're working towards the Morecambe game, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. So can you see them posing different kinds of challenges to what we face against the likes of Birmingham, Aston Villa, uh, given that they're almost at the peak of their season, if you like? Yeah, the, the games programme that we've had has been, you know, mixed. You know, we've played some really good opposition at um, higher levels. We've played uh, clubs at, a, at a lower at lower levels, which their game is, and style is different. Um, and we have to be able to adapt during the course of the season because whoever we're going to come up against, um, and everyone's not going to play the same. So in terms of our games program, the program has been very good. So uh, the players have adapted well to it all. Um, they perform well. But at the end of the day, you can have the best pre-season or the worst pre-season in the world. It only counts on the first uh, first game of the season. We often hear from Matt Sadler and we spoke to him after all the pre-season games. So we've heard a lot about pre-season from his perspective. So what's it been like from your perspective in your role as assistant head coach? Look, the gaffer, you know, sets sets a stall out, you know, how he wants pre-season, how he wants the team uh, to play. You know, as a staff, we sit down, we plan the sessions, we plan the pre-season and, you know, we have to be able to adapt uh, along the way. You know, numbers, you know, are high or low in terms of injuries and, you know, the games programme and stuff like that. But everything's planned um, and we've all, you know, enjoy working alongside each other. And uh, again, it's close knit. Uh, we want to achieve, we want to move everything forward. Last year was very encouraging, you know, because we had a decent season, but that will count for nothing um, going into this season. We have to make sure that we build and move the club forward again. But the gaffer's done a great job in terms of, you know, uh, putting in place a, an environment that everybody wants to come into and work hard. Um, and that's a credit to, you know, the owners, the sponsors, the players, the staff, um, you guys as well, because we all play a part in that as well, you know. So. Uh, we're not just left on our own. Everybody plays a part in this. Finally, I think it's less than two weeks until the Morecambe game. Excited? Yeah, normally pre-season drags. You have a spell where it drags along, but this one has gone really, really quickly. Um, and once we get, you know, uh, the drug of the game out of the way, we, you know, we fly back uh, home, then we've got one more game before the season starts. So uh, it will come around quickly. And that's where the real action starts and I'm really looking forward to that.